experiences and other things. Uh, Chris was always there and uh, so much my grounding. You saw from the video that, uh, you know, we fell in love years ago doing community work with kids and that was our, our great bond. And uh, over time I decided to go into business and uh, when we got married, uh, I had no money, no business experience and no business idea. But I knew I wanted to start a company. So I was uh, ready to go. But I did have one thing, and that is I had uh, you, Chris. And, uh, you know, no matter what, she always believed. And uh, I knew that she would love me for who I am. And uh, just a little story for just one second about, about uh, Chris. Uh, a defining moment in the evolution of Capital One was when um, it became a time to um, uh, be become a public company through an IPO. And uh, so I went home and talked uh, about this idea with Chris, and she cried. And this was not tears of joy saying, yes, my husband has made it. Uh, this was, uh, I said, Chris, um, what's wrong? I think I knew, but she said, you know, Rich, I'm worried about you uh, becoming a public company CEO. You know, I'm, I'm worried about uh, that they will try to change who you are. And I said, well, Chris, who, who's they? She said, you know, Wall Street and the media and, and all of them. She said, you know, Rich, I love that you chase your dreams, but, you know, we and the kids, we just love you the way you, you are, and I don't want anything to change that. So way back then, uh, I made a deal with Chris that if she ever felt that the world that uh, I, I had changed, that uh, I would immediately quit my job at Capital One and um, she, that would be her decision. Now that was 14 years ago. She hasn't pulled that little uh, plug yet. Uh, but uh, Chris, you've been from there for me all along and knowing that you are the real unsung hero behind all of this, I just wanted to say tonight, this is for you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Richard, I, I want to also thank you as a member of the, the Board of Junior Achievements uh, for stepping up uh, for, for Finance Park. And like I said a moment ago about changing the world, that's no joke. Can you imagine if every 30 to 35 year old in this country had gone through Finance Park when they were in middle school or in junior high school? Would we be in this mortgage crisis today? Would folks be trying to buy houses they couldn't afford? Would we have to deal with the stuff that, would I have to report the stuff I'm reporting now every day? Finance Park, Finance Park could actually make the biggest impact with kids and our financial future combined together in this country. Thank you for stepping up to the plate for the kids with Finance Park. Well, keep your hands moving, and ladies and gentlemen, give a warm welcome to our next presenters, Chairman and CEO of Long and Foster, and by the way, a 2004 Washington Business Hall of Fame laureate himself, Wes Foster, accompanied by Imani Harrison. Donald Graham is chairman and CEO of the Washington Post Company. He presides over an empire that is black and white and red all over. <laughs> and in Washington, if you don't get it, you really don't get it. Right, Mr. Foster? You ready for me? Thank you. That was wonderful. You want to stay right there. That's a hard act to follow, you know. You're very good. I have to read mine. You've got yours all memorized. You were wonderful. I'm here to introduce Donald Graham, but I, th I think we've already been introduced very well by this young lady. Donald Graham is chairman and chief executive officer of the Washington Post co Company and chairman of the Washington Post uh, 
newspaper where he was publisher for 21 years. Don is also chairman of the District of Columbia College Access Program, a private, private foundation which since 1999 has helped double the number of public high school students going on to college and has helped triple the number of graduating, uh, graduating from college. Since its inception, DC CAP has assisted over 11,500 students to enroll in college and has provided scholarships totaling more than 15 million uh, to DC students attending more than 500 colleges and universities nationwide. DC CAP is serving 16,000 students this year during the current uh, school year. Betty Foster and I help support this in a small way, and it's a wonderful organization. Don started this years ago uh, with a chairman of Mobile Oil Company, and uh, it is a most world, uh, worthwhile organization. After graduating in 1966 from Harvard College, where he was president of the Harvard Crimson, Don was drafted and served as an information specialist with the 1st Cavalry Division in Vietnam. When he returned home, he became a patrolman with the Washington Metropolitan uh, Police Department. Don is a real fashion plate. When he was walking along Connecticut Avenue, the head of Raleigh's department store stopped him looked at the label in his aging coat and said, we're going to reclaim that suit. <laughs> Don serves as a member of the Pulitzer Prize Board and as a trustee of the Federal City Council. Don and I have become friends of sorts in the last few years, but in spite of that, he still feels free to overcharge us for, his ad for our advertising. <laughs> Please enjoy this brief video on the life of my good friend, Don. <laughs> I grew up in Washington. I went to St. Albans. We rode to school on streetcars. You could uh, go to ball games at Griffith Stadium. You could go to these wonderful jazz and rock and roll concerts at the Howard Theater on weekends. My dad was the publisher of the Post and a remarkable figure. He was a Supreme Court clerk, worked in the government, served in World War II, and was devoted to this country and to the paper. After his death in 1963, my mom took over the, the company and ran it, so the two of them were indelible imprint in, in my life. When I graduated from college, I was drafted into the Army, spent two years in the U.S. Army with the 1st Cavalry Division in Vietnam, not as an infantryman in the Public Information Office. Vietnam was when I uh, really thought about it and decided I couldn't imagine anything in, I could do in life that could make more of a difference than, than uh, running a newspaper. And I wasn't there two days before I realized this, you know, this, this is different. And it made me think about the impact that news and newspapers can have, and, and I'm still thinking about it. I've focused a lot of my own time and effort on an organization called the DC College Access Program, and I'm as proud of that as anything I've ever done in business. I run a company, the Washington Post Company, that's been shaped by a lot of great people. Most of the job of building the Post was done by my grandfather and my father and then my mother. The other huge influence on the company over the years has been Warren Buffett, who bought 10% 10, 10 of the Post in 1974 and has been on our board ever since. The stories that I think kids who are interested in business ought to take a look at are the people who really started with nothing but desire started with nothing but work ethic and, and an ability to focus on what was most important to them. My friend Donald Graham.